Welcome back everyone. Let's go ahead and talk about some secret Google message tricks and tips that you can go ahead and start implementing on your Android phone today. Now these are secret, I mean you can call them secret if you want to, they're just tricks and tips at the end of the day. Now the first thing which is actually really cool that I didn't know too much about, that you can actually schedule you know, text messages on your Android phone. So what this looks like is essentially we go ahead and open up our Google message just like this. Let's say we wanted to send it to somebody. Well, let's say you wanted to send a message to somebody when you get somewhere. So let's say you send hi or whatever it is, right? Well, if you actually hold down on the send button, which is right there, you can actually go ahead and pull up a different menu. So don't click send, just hold it down like this, not the emojis, you wanna hold down on the send message like that. And you'll actually get into this specific panel and it says schedule send. Now this tells you when you can go ahead and send it. You can send it later today, later tonight, tomorrow, or you can even pick a date and time to actually go ahead and send out this message. Now that is actually pretty insane. So all we have to do here, you can either pick one of these pre-registered times, or what you can do is click pick date and time. And what's going to happen here is it's going to pick up a little bit of a thing right here. And all you have to do here is pick the time and the date, and you can basically go ahead and send out that message automatically, which I think is really, really cool. So that's the first thing. I think that's one of the coolest things ever. Now the next thing is not as cool as that, but essentially if you wanted to go ahead and pin messages on your Android phone. Now if you have tons of different messages you're texting people, well sometimes you may want to go ahead and have some of the most important people pinned to the top. These can include family members, friends, doctors, whatever the case is. Well if you want to go ahead and pin them, all you want to do is go and hold down on the message like this and you'll see a little top menu bar come up. All you want to do here is you want to go ahead and click on the top little pin section, which is right there. So I just messed up again. The little pin the option right there, you want to click on it, and you'll see a little pin next to your specific little you know, name right there. Now, as long as that pin icon is still there, you're pretty much good to go. If you, want to un if you want to unpin them, all you have to do is hold it down like this, click unpin, and they will be unpinned from the top. So that's another really cool thing within your Android phone. Now, another awesome trick is actually sending and sharing your location within Google Messages to somebody else, whether on Android or iPhone. Now, this is something that iPhones have, and I think it works pretty well on you know, iPhones, but the way to do this on Androids is actually fairly easy. We make our way over to our chat. So whoever you want to go ahead and show your location to, you want to go ahead and open up the chat, you know, wherever they are. You want to go ahead and click onto the little option bar thing at the bottom, but you'll see a little plus button on the left side. So on the left side of the text box, you want to go and click on that plus button, and what's going to happen, a little drop-down menu is going to go ahead and come down. So here you see a bunch of different things that come up. All you want to do is go and click on the location toggle. So the location toggle is right there, and this will basically go ahead and show you every single option you have to actually go ahead and send the location out to a certain person. So if you click on location, it's going to ask you whether you want to give your precise location or your approximate location. So approximate location is going to be pretty much, you know, a high level view of where you are. Precise is exactly where you are. So then you can go ahead and figure out whether you want to share it while using the app only this time or don't allow. So you can go and kind of configure it there a little bit more. And at that point, whichever one you click, they will basically be able to have your precise or approximate location. And that is another really cool thing that you have within your Android phone. Now hopping out of here, we are now going to make our way over to our settings portion of our specific Google Message app. So we can do that by swiping down like this. We want to click on the three dots on the top right corner, and you want to go and click on settings. Now, when you click on settings, there's a lot of different things within here. I will always recommend everyone under chat features to enable all the chat features you have enabled. I don't have a SIM card in this specific device, but if you have an, or see anything within chat features, I would probably recommend enabling that because that's actually a really cool thing. Now, on top of that, under message organization, which is right here, this is one of the cooler options within Google Messages. So iPhones kind of have the same thing too. So here we have the ability of actually configuring our messages based off different things. So at the first part, we can see view messages by category. What this allows us to do is it allows us to go ahead and kind of separate our specific messages based on different categories. So if we have somebody who's messaging us like as a friend or as a whatever, well, they did our, you know, we want to be notified of them. But if we're having things like one-time passcodes and business things and all those other kind of things, well, you can go ahead and kind of configure it this way and enable this, so it'll go and kind of keep those things separate. Now, speaking about one-time passcodes, we have the ability of actually auto-deleting one-time passcodes as soon as they start coming up after 24 hours. 
So this is something that I just have enabled. I mean, I would just recommend enabling this because if you're getting a lot of one-time passcodes, it can just you know engulf your whole entire message application, whether you're on Google Messages, Samsung Messages, iMessages, whatever. It's very, very annoying. So here you actually kind of have the ability of actually configuring this and auto-deleting them automatically, which I think is really, really cool. Now, on top of that, hopping back, one of the biggest issues that just plague all phones in general, not just, you know, Androids, but iPhones too, is spam. Spam texts, spam calls are very, very annoying. Luckily for us, under Google Messages, we do have somewhat of the capability to stop these spam texts on our Android phones. So to do this, what we want to do is within our Google Messages application, we click on Settings as we were just in, and you want to go under Spam Protection, which is right here. Now, under spam protection, it will go ahead and basically allow us to enable this specific toggle. So what this does is, you know, basically says to help delete spam or detect spam messages, send some data about your, you know, messages to Google, and it'll go ahead and, you know, disclude them from, you know, their databases, and it'll essentially make it a lot harder for them to notify you, and they'll be considered spam if people are consistently texting you about, you know, hey, sign up for this or sign up for this. If you don't want to be notified of them, you can enable this, and sometimes it'll go under spam bucket. Now, if you still get them, you can, you know, if you want to see them, you can go under the spam portion of your specific Google messages. But that's another big thing. If you want to stop these spam texts, I would probably recommend going through and actually enable this. Now, another big thing within Google messages is actually the iPhone reactions. So if you're ever within a message with an iPhone user and they react to a text, and sometimes they can say liked by this person or loved by this person, well, sometimes that can be kind of annoying. So if you actually want to go ahead and pretty much enable those reactions as emojis instead of those little ticks or whatever, well, what you can do is you can go ahead and make your way over to your Google Messages settings as it were before. You want to go ahead and click on Advanced Settings, which is right here. And when you're here, you'll see a ton of different things that come up. But right here where it says Show iPhone Reactions as Emojis, all you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on the specific thing and enable that specific setting. Now, what that's going to do is it's pretty much going to go ahead and anytime you get a text from an iPhone user and they actually like that message on iMessage, well, the fact that you have this toggle enabled, it's not going to go ahead and show you that little text within here saying, oh, this person, this message was liked by this person or this person loved or hugged, this not whatever it is. Well, it's going to go ahead and just show you that emoji over the bubble. And that's another really cool thing. You may or may not have to have you know, messages and the chat features enabled. Regardless, that's another really cool thing we have inside of Google Messages that, in my opinion, is actually really, really cool. Now, on top of that, if we make our way back over to our settings panel, as I mentioned before, there are tons of things within here. Another thing I would probably recommend just kind of seeing if you want to enable is under help improve messages. So if we click here, what this allows us to do is to pretty much give Google the ability to monitor, not necessarily monitor our usage, but to essentially allow smart features to learn over time. So it says your conversation stay on your device while, you know, it's a private, you know, specific thing. But essentially what this allows us to do is to give Google the ability of kind of monitoring and using the data behind our device to actually improve Google Messages. They use this data if they want to go ahead and build out Google Messages a little bit further. Now, if you are into what I'm saying, then keep this enabled. If you are not into what I'm saying, then I would recommend disabling it. There's really no point in doing this if you don't really care about it. There's still, you know, tons of users who opt in randomly anyway. But if you're somebody who wants to go ahead and enable this, then go ahead and do it. And that's really, you know, another cool thing. Now, on top of that, I would always recommend if you have an Android phone, keeping it updated, just go ahead and update Google Messages as often as possible. There's tons of cool features being added, and I do think with Samsung starting to adopt Google Messages as their main messaging application, I think Google Messages is going to be probably one of the best messaging apps for your Android phone. So that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.